Welcome back. Um, today we're doing something a little different. We're going to be watching the video from Bright Side called 10 Biggest Sea Dinosaurs That Ever Existed on Earth. Um, there were no sea dinosaurs. They were prehistoric marine reptiles or prehistoric sharks or other stuff like that. So, uh, let's see what they have to say. And no hate to Brent's side. Is it insanely loud? Is that Godzilla? Already, um, all faith I had is gone within the first ten seconds as they show Godzilla. Whatever that is. Okay, Jurassic World. That's a shark or something. The 10 biggest sea dinosaurs that ever existed on Earth. So it's not just for the title. I thought they might have corrected themselves in the video. Okay. The ocean is a pretty terrifying place. Filled with sharks, venomous yeah. fish, and okay. giant squids, to yeah. name a few. But whatever lives in the sea nowadays can't be compared with the huge monsters that dominated the depths millions of years ago. And the blue whale. That's all I have to say, the blue whale. <sighs> Alright, continue. By monsters? I mean long extinct marine reptiles and dinosaurs. Okay, kind of corrected themselves. They said marine reptiles, and but they still said dinosaurs, so... Since many people are better acquainted with the land-roaming giants of the past, this video will open your eyes to those that ruled the waters. Before we dive into the prehistoric oceans, don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring that notification. I don't care. Uh, maybe I'll do that. You should do that for my video. Now, at first glance at this animal, your first thought is probably, Whoa, a prehistoric crocodile! But looks can be- That, that looks nothing like a crocodile. Okay. Deceiving, um. because the two aren't really related. Pliosaurus was a genus of eight species- Yeah, that looks nothing like a crocodile. Belonging to the larger family of Pliosaurus. These prehistoric reptiles were characterized by short necks, massive heads, and broad flippers. Pliosauruses lived during the late Jurassic period, around 150 to 100. I have no idea what a Pliosaurus is. I haven't found out about that one yet, so I'm taking accountability for most of this stuff. 45 million years ago, their remains were first discovered in Norway in the middle of the 19th century. They certainly were real giants with the largest species weighing more than 30 tons and growing up to 40 feet long. That's cool, but the blue whale is like, like double that or something, maybe triple that. Okay, let's just keep watching. Also, this animal had an incredibly strong bite. In fact, it was four times more powerful than that of the mighty T-Rex. Already compared. Whoopsies there, I accidentally cut the recording, so we're going to continue from here, and I'll just put those together in editing. Alright, so yeah, they're already comparing stuff to t rats which I guess is fair when you're talking about bite force. But using Jurassic Park footage, eh, it looks good, I don't care. 9. Chronosaurus I know about this one. Speaking of the Pliosaur family, there's also the Chronosaurus. It had all the typical features of a Pliosaur. A large head with massive jaws, a short neck, and a thick, squarish trunk. They probably lived all over the world given that their fossils have been discovered in both Australia and Colombia. The largest Chronosaurus ever found was 34 feet long from snout to tail. Hold on, I swear, weighed about I swear that was sh that's shorter than the last one. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, where are we? 243. Where do I remember that? 
I swear that's shorter than the last one. More than 30 tons and growing up to 40 feet. Yeah, hold on. That's shorter than the last one. I thought it was, okay, I guess it's no order. About 12 tons. This marine reptile's teeth weren't really deadly. They were only a few inches long and not all that sharp. This they're, they're still teeth, so I'd assume they'd be pretty good at killing stuff. Just that, whatever. Despite this fact, Kronosaurus was a savage and successful predator. There we go. When pursuing its prey, it could reach super high speeds, and its bite was extremely powerful. Okay. Eight, Nothosaurus. Not really. It's a semi, right? I don't know. Something. This thing. This thing was not bigger than a chrono, right? According to fossil evidence, these creatures were relatives of the pliosaurs and lived. A Is everything in this video a pliosaur? About 230 million years ago, at about 15 feet long, the Nothosaur. Is there no order? They're getting shorter. How does this not compare to anything we have today? This is like the size of a great white. Whatever. Horus wasn't among the largest prehistoric sea creatures, but it was one of the most vicious. These reptiles had long, needle-sharp teeth that it used to catch squid and fish. Some yes. state that Nothosaurus could snap their long heads sideways to catch a passing fish, kind of like how a crocodile does. I guess, yeah, maybe. Surprisingly, researchers say that these reptiles shared a lot of similar features with the modern sea lion. I'm, I'm not seeing it. Maybe they do, but I don't know. I'm not quite seeing that. Lion. Nothosauruses had four legs that they could use to walk, just like sea lions do. Also, they lived and hunted in the ocean, but could come out on the shore to rest. Finally, experts still can't determine if they laid eggs or actually gave birth to their young. Hence the name. Um. Well, were they were they mammals? That doesn't look like a mammal, so I'm gonna assume they laid eggs. False lizard. Maybe they're right here, but I don't know. It's just in Jurassic World Evolution. That's the only reason I know it exists. The Styxosaurus belonged to the Plesiosaur family. Maybe I'll watch that. Family ...and lived during the late Cretaceous period around 85 to 70 million years ago. Upon first glance at this dinosaur, you might mistake it for a sea snake. And it'd be an honest mistake. Styxosauruses were about 35 feet in length, but over... No, that doesn't really look anything like a sea snake. I have to say, I've never seen a, sneeze, a sea snake with a long neck and a pretty round body and some flippers. Okay. 16 feet of that consisted just of their long snake-like neck. They had a comparatively small body and weighed approximately 4 tons. Their mouths were full of razor-sharp, cone-shaped teeth that they used to catch fish. They didn't need to chew their prey thanks to the 200 small stones called gastroliths in their bellies that probably aided in digestion. At the same time, some scientists believe that the Styxosaurus used these stones to sink to the ocean bottom. What? What? Maybe. I have no idea. In search of Probably particular not. types of fish. Hmm, looks kind of like Nessie to me. Yeah, no, no, no shit. All plesiosaurs looked a bit like Nessie. <laughs> Six, Alberto Nectis. I don't know what that is. The Alberto Nectus was another representative of the Plesiosaur. Plesiosaur. But it says Pliosaur up there. Huh? 
It's a plesiosaur, not a pliosaur, I'd assume. And, um, whoa! It kind of looks like Nessie! Whoa! Sore family, meaning that this marine reptile had a small head on an incredibly long neck and large flipper-like limbs that helped it move through the water. These creatures occupied the sea around North America 76 to 70 million years ago. The length of this sea monster could reach 38 feet, with its neck taking up 23 feet of that length. Okay. The neck was a true record breaker. It had a okay, whopping I get it. 76 it had a long bones neck. in it. No other animal known to humankind has had so many vertebrae in its neck. I wouldn't know, so... Scientists aren't sure why they needed such a lengthy neck. Alberto Nectuses might have used it to collect shellfish off the seabed, or perhaps it helped them capture their main prey, fish and squids. This aquatic reptile also had gastroliths in its stomachs. Did that just say the Megalodon turn into Great White? I'm not even gonna ask. Some of them were as big as five and a half inches in diameter. Five, the Lazalmedon. The Lazalmedon means sea lord in ancient Greek, and there's a pretty good reason behind this name. These representatives of the plesiosaur family were huge predators that could reach four. Oh, it looks like Nessie. Forty feet in length. That's about as big as a four-story building. Not as big, as long as a four-story building. Also, why didn't you mention this for any of the others? A lot of the others were about this long. Their long, flipper-like limbs could grow up to seven feet in length, allowing them to move through the water with shocking efficiency. The Thalazalmedon's amazing neck had 62 vertebrae and could be up to 20 feet in length. That's half its body size. Like most plesiosaurs, these creatures had comparatively small heads, measuring just 19 inches. But that tiny head was full of long, sharp teeth that reached almost two inches in length. Okay, I get it. Plesiosaurus had long, sharp teeth. I don't, I'm not hating on bright side, it's just... This video is confusing me a lot. However, these reptiles were unlikely to use their teeth for purposes other than catching prey. Just like other plesiosaurs, their stomachs were full of stones that probably helped with digestion by rubbing up against each other when the gastric walls moved, crushing and grinding up the fish inside. So we're not gonna say it might have helped with sinking? Okay. Or Tylosaurus. Whoa, I have a friend with this name. No wait, it's Tyler. Forget this. The Tylosaurus belonged to the Mosasaur family. It dominated the shallow seas of North America about 85 to 80 million years ago. This was an enormous predator, with the biggest representatives reaching 45 feet in length. It had a narrow hydrodynamic body with a blunt, powerful head that the animal used to ram and stun its prey. Its body was equipped with agile flippers and a long tail decorated with a maneuverable fin. The Tylosaurus was a carnivore, and its diet included not only fish, turtles, and small sharks, but also other mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, and flightless birds. 3. The Shonisaurus okay. The Shonisaurus lived on our planet during the late Triassic- Yep, I knew that. Only because of Jurassic World, but whatever. Approximately 215 million years ago. The remains of this creature were first discovered in Nevada in 1920, not far from the Shoshone Mountains. This prehistoric reptile resembled a huge chubby dolphin. It was about 50 feet long and weighed approximately 30 tons. That's just a big ichthyosaur. Like, I know they were ichthyosaurs, but bro, that's like just a scaled up image of an ichthyosaurus. Which is more than the combined weight of two sperm whales. There's an even more fascinating. Yeah, guess what's not? Two blue whales. Fascinating fact about the Shoniosaurus, other than its incredible size, this creature didn't have any teeth. Then what are those? Proof. 
pretty sure it had teeth. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. But I would assume it had tiny teeth. Researchers figured out that its babies had teeth when they were born, but they fell out as they matured. One theory suggests that Shonisauruses probably didn't need teeth due to their sheer size. Okay. Is Megalodon smaller? Probably, but still. The Megalodon had teeth. A lot of big animals that are 50 feet have teeth. Two, Mosasaurus. Of course it is. The Mosasaurus is a truly gigantic predator that dominated the seas all over the world about 66 million years ago. According to fossil evidence, some specimens could be more than 50 feet in length. I don't think that's a Mosasaur. Uh, yeah, that's definitely not a mo Hey, 50 feet. Guess what? This thing has teeth. Length. This fact makes the Mosasaurus the biggest marine carnivore of its time. One of the most terrifying things about this creature was its crocodile-like head, decorated with literally hundreds of razor-sharp teeth neatly organized in two rows on both jaws. The thing is that it was pretty challenging for the Mosasaurus to grab its prey in the water. That's why it had all these teeth. Plus, something sp Whoa! It had a ton of teeth. But it's the same size as Shonosaurus, which didn't have teeth, because it was too big for teeth. Okay. Special, pterygoid teeth anchored to the bones on the roof of its mouth. This made hunting and holding onto its prey much easier. One, Shastasaurus. Oh wow, I might have looked up. The Shastasaurus is the biggest marine reptile that has ever existed. These predators lived during the late Triassic period about 210 million years ago. These amazing giants could reach lengths of up to 69 feet and weigh I have a submarine on this thing's belly and arc. ...more than 75 tons. This made the Shastasaurus as heavy as a blue whale and it... Okay. Wasn't bigger though. If you could stand this creature up vertically, it'd be as tall as a seven-story building. Despite appearances, the Shastasaurus was actually- This just looks like a, like a sardine with like a horribly broken nose. Truly pretty slim for its size. Its rib cage was only six feet across. Yeah, only. You'd think that this big guy was chowing down on other dinosaurs, but that's not the case. Other dinosaurs. Yeah, other, other. Let's go with that. Peace at all. This reptile survived on a diet that consisted of small fish and cephalopods. Like, it's almost like it was an ichthyosaur, and that's what it was built for. Octopuses and squid. What giant sea creature impressed you most of all? Um, the blue whale. All right, let's get to the next video. All right. Next video, also by Brightside, eight dinosaurs that could beat T-Rex in a fight. Let's see if this list amazes me and is good. It was a 30 feet long and 12 feet tall beast, the king of dinosaurs. Its massive and muscular body weighed up to eight tons. Its serrated teeth were sharp and its jaws had a bite so strong they could- Wait, serrated? That looks like a that looks like a megalodon tooth, and I'm pretty sure T-Rex did not have a serrated tooth. But whatever. Crush a car. The creature had two powerful legs. It li this thing is ugly. Lived in forested river valleys all across North America, almost 70 million years ago. I'm talking about the most famous movie star among dinosaurs, T-Rex. It was very smart, with a brain twice as big as that of any large meat-eating dino. It was slower than other hunters, developing a speed of up to 12 miles per hour. Its other weakness was its small arms. Um, Some scientists okay. Adjusted small arms? I, I don't know if that's really a weakness, because it didn't need the arms, but... Already talking about small arms. That's cool. An evolutionary leftover. 
like the pelvic bones of some snakes. But others believe T. rex used its arms to hunt. Its four-inch claws helped the animal out. Okay, so what is that? I'm gonna crawl in it right now. It's Spinosaurus. T. rex was undoubtedly frightening, but surprisingly, there were even scarier dinosaurs in the How did I know it? Oh, so shocking. Past. Around 100 million years ago, there was a giant creature with the name that meant a spine lizard. Um, so there's no you in Spinosaur in Spino. It, um So this is already misspelled and No, Spinosaurus would not beat T Rex in a fight. It just wouldn't. It was Spinosaurus, the largest carnivorous dinosaur. It was bigger than... What is this? T-Rex, and could grow almost 60 feet long. Yeah, no, it wasn't bigger than T-Rex. In height, maybe. But in mass, no. Its weight could be as great as 22 tons. The animal had long spines on its back. They could grow up to seven feet long and were connected by folds of skin. They formed something that Kind of, but like... It's not connected by folds of skin. That's its vertebrae. They're just extended vertebrae. That looked like a sail. Some scientists think it was a hump Spinosaurus used to store water. This dino had dense bones and short hind limbs. Researchers believe that these dino- Yeah, short hind limbs. Proceeds to give it the longest limbs known to man. Those ...could use their flat and wide clawed feet for paddling. This was the first dino that could ever swim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, first dino that could ever swim. Okay. I don't know. Definitely not. Unfortunately, it couldn't process smells like most other theropods. Probably These could. Are a group of two-legged carnivorous dinosaurs that appeared on Earth 230 million years ago. That's why the animals the creature hunted could hide from it on land. The spino dino spent most of its time in the water. Could hide from it on land? And did he just call it the spino dino? Spinosaurus, believe it or not, could walk. But also, no one calls it the Spino Dino. It roamed the swamps of North Africa and mostly fed on fish, big prehistoric sharks, and sometimes other dinosaurs. Uh -huh. It had a long, thin, and narrow snout like a crocodile. Unlike other dinos of its kind, which had curved teeth, Spinosaurus had conically shaped straight teeth. Okay, I um, accidentally cut the recording again, but straight teeth. Uh, those teeth look pretty curved. Yeah, um, whatever. We'll let that slide. Must have been a design choice. Had conically shaped straight teeth. Giganotos. Is this, this is just like Jurassic brain. This is Jurassic Park type of thinking. Saurus, which is the Greek word for giant southern lizard, was considered the largest meat. Is this the Ark Giga? Well, this is straight up the Giga from Ark. Meat eating dino until Spinosaurus was found. It lived around 100 million years ago in. Why the fuck just T Rex in South America? Or Africa, or whatever that is. Nah. South America. Around 30 million years before T. rex appeared there. It was longer and taller, but more slender than T. rex. And while T. rex had two fingers... It probably wasn't taller. Maybe longer. This giant had three. It was... Okay. And T. rex had a, like... Fight that was like... 10,000 PSI stronger or something. Locked upright on its two big and very strong legs, its tail was pointed and thin, which helped the creature make fast turns while running and keep its balance. The animal could move at a speed of up to 31 miles per hour, 
T-Rex's maximum speed was 25 miles per hour at the most. Bro, this is like ARC standards. Any faster than that, and the giant could lose its balance and fall over. Giganotosaurus had two arms with- Ha ha ha. With sharp claws. It was mostly an opportunistic meat-eater feeding on everything it found on its way. Its bite wasn't as strong as T-Rex- Why do we got the kangaroo pose going on? But it still managed to deal with some bigger animals, like herbivore dinosaurs. Maybe there was even an Argantinosaurus among them. The big- What the hell is an Argantinosaurus? Do you mean Argentinosaurus? Biggest animals ever found. It's hard to imagine how Giganotosaurus could take down a 50 ton beast on its own. That's why scientists think they may have hunted in groups. The animal's only weakness was its small. I don't think there's a single person who thinks Giganotosaurus hunted in groups. Small brain. It was twice smaller than T Rex's. This means the T could at least win a chess game. Big retractable sickle-shaped claws in the creature's feet are great for- Did he just say retractable? Bro, it is not a cat! Cunning. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Utah Raptor. This thing is not killing your T-Rex. Oh my god. That's a mini T-Rex that lived 120 Not a mini T-Rex, a big dromaeosaurid. Five million years ago. If a big T-Rex was coming for you, you could hide under a rock or some other place where it wouldn't be able to reach you. But there would be no place where its mini version couldn't follow you. It's not a mini version. If you want a mini version, you should have picked one of the other Tyrannosaurids. Discovered in Utah, strong, whoa, toothy, and armored with huge claws, more than nine inches long. An adult Utah raptor was 20 feet long and 5 feet tall at the hip. These creatures were covered in feathers. This is why fully grown animals look like gigantic turkeys. <sighs> Jurassic Park. The Utah raptor's main weakness was their size. They were a bit smaller than many other dinos, but these guys made up for that by hunting in packs. Probably didn't! We have no evidence that Utah Raptor hunted in patch, I think. Allosaurus, which means a different lizard. Allosaurus would not kill T Rex. In Greek, was a massive carnivore reaching 40 feet in length and weighing two tons. It roamed the earth around 150 million years ago. Similar to T Rex, this dino had strong back legs and a large snout. Its mouth was full of sharp teeth. Purina Cat Chow, for wow, cats, cats of all ages. Cats, Curious kitten. Easily lost them when eating, but they usually grew back. I don't know, Saurus was maybe? already fully grown by the age of 15, and its lifespan was around 28 years. The creature had a short neck and a long, narrow skull. Disproportionately big compared to the rest of its body. This dino also had a pair of horns above its eyes, and, and reaches along the top crests? of its nasal bones leading to those horns. Allosaurus chased big herbivore dinosaurs. When several Allosauruses gathered in a group, they could take down even such colossal creatures as Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus? What the hell is an Apatosaurus? But scientists still doubt if they could cooperate, because these dinos were generally not too friendly toward one another. Some of the animal's bones had an hourglass shape, which made them lighter and reduced their strength. They were similar to the hollow bones modern birds have. Another weakness of this dino was its bite. It was less powerful than that of some modern animals, like lions, Not really a weakness, it was just more adapted to what it did. Scientists may have used its skull as a hatchet. No. The Rizinosaurus was one of the three- A Rizinosaurus? as a hatchet. The Rizinosaurus. How you gonna do my second favorite dinosaur like that, bro? This was one of the freakiest dinos out there. It lived 100 to 60 million years ago. 
It had a very small head and bizarre feet with four toes, unlike their ends. Oh, you're focusing on the toes? Of course you are, Brightside. Of course you are. Sessors that had three. Its body was covered with feathers. This weirdo had the longest claws sign. Don't call him a weirdo. Come on, man. Scientists have ever recorded. They were three feet long each. These claws were curved and sharp. The dino used them to collect plants for lunch. Scientists are still not sure if this creature. What is it with this iguana? Why does it keep appearing? The creature was a herbivore or carnivore, or both. It was an herbivore and omnivore. Both. The dino had a long neck. There were no teeth in its upper jaw. Its wrist bones were like the ones modern birds have. The Rizinosaurus might have evolved. Stop calling it a Rizinosaurus. Evolved from a meat-eating to plant-eating animal throughout time. Unfortunately, no, I don't think that's how it works. In comparison with meat eaters, herbivore dinosaurs were much weaker, and still. Uh, Jurassic Park thinking, man. Jurassic Park disease is getting to me. Jurassic Park syndrome goes crazy. Oh, those claws could make <sighs> enemies think twice. Maybe I don't know. Probably we. Lizard or a. So we're just not gonna. Okay. Why'd you start off with high spine lizard? Brocanthosaurus lived 110 million years ago. It was two feet shorter than T-Rex, but had a similar body structure. That's not two feet. There's nowhere near two feet short. Like T-Rexes, these creatures often went after bigger and more challenging. Why is it so small? Challenging animals. For example, with those backbones so hard. I know, this wouldn't kill T-Rex. It seemed as if they were carrying a giant turtle shell, like Ankylosaur. What is an Ankylosaur? I guess that's more acceptable than Argentinosaurus or whatever. High-spined lizard was very territorial. It had a brain shaped like the letter S and an excellent sense of smell. What made a Crocanthosaurus vulnerable was its a small crow. arms. And still, the creature used them to hunt other animals surprisingly well. The dino pulled its catch close to its torso. What? What? No! No! And again with the small arms. <sighs> Which was like a hug you wouldn't be able to escape from. I don't think it would be hugging you. Diplodocus lived 100... Maybe. More likely than some of the others on this list, but still, highly unlikely. 50 million years ago, the 90 foot long creature was possibly the longest dinosaur ever. Its tail which could reach 46 feet in length, was the longest tail of any animal ever. And its neck was more than 20 feet long. The underside of the dino's tail had two rows of bones, which made the creature even stronger and more mobile. Diplodocus didn't look scary. Long-necked, gentle, peacefully munching on plants, until it used its tail like a whip, making even the scariest meat eaters back away. This tail was the center of the dino's mass which was why Diplodocus could move very That's quickly. Cool. Scientists first thought, this is a lizard-like animal, but its posture was more like that of an elephant. Plus, Diplodocus had nasal openings on its forehead. I and wouldn't compare it to an elephant. Small teeth and weak force bite. Quetz why would it need to bite? So Coatlas was the... I don't know, man. I don't know anymore. There's a better chance than some of the others, but still, highly unlikely. Biggest flying animal ever. It lived 70 million years ago and controlled the skies of North America. It was a toothy, pin-headed creature with a blunt snout. It was as tall as a giraffe and weighed 550 pounds. Quetzalcoatlus had a small torso and long neck and legs. Its wings were short compared to the rest of its body, but no, I don't, long I'm not so sure about that. Feet. Scientists think this animal could fly at a speed of up to 80 miles per hour. And travel highly unlikely for an animal that, that size than, let's say t-rex or most other carnivores of that so time. then why is it on a list of eight dinosaurs that could beat t-rex in a fight but it had powerful muscles which helped the animal rise into the air in the blink of an eye um uh, 
goodbye, I guess. Be sure to like and subscribe. And, uh, if you want more of this, I don't know, comment.